But we're in the study of uh, Hebrews, and uh, we'll start somewhere (laughs) in Hebrews. Before we do, though, let's have a short word. Heavenly Father, thank Thee for this time that we can engage in this study of Thy Word, and we're grateful for the book of Hebrews and for the message that it has for us and what we can learn from it that we may be more prepared to live this life and to look forward to our hope in heaven. We're grateful for the person of Jesus, for the love that he had for us, that he took it upon himself to come in the form of a man, to live and die and be resurrected, and that his blood may be able to wash our sins away. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's uh, read again just the first four verses of Hebrews. God starts off with God, and we've already commented on that. In various times and various ways spoke in time past to the fathers. And of course the fathers are, you know, those ancients of old, uh, ancient to this time anyway, even more ancient today, uh, by the prophets. And of course, the uh, Hebrew Christians would uh, consider highly uh, whatever the prophets had to say. And keep in mind, these are uh, Christians that knew their Old Testament, and likely uh, they still practice a lot of the uh, law of Moses, uh, even though you know it, that in it, in and of itself didn't do them any good in in the New Kingdom. But uh, they need to say they knew their Old Testament, so they knew the prophets. They knew that God had spoken to them through the prophets. <clears throat> but it says here. In these last days, he's spoken to us by his son, who he has appointed heir of all things. Now, uh, this spoken to us by his son is really all encompassing, because even though we still have the prophets in written form, there are not going to be any more prophets. Jesus was the uh, last prophet. He is a prophet, priest, and king. He's the last one. He is speaking to them either you know, when he was up on the earth or through his apostles, his ambassadors. He's speaking through them. And we and they still speak to us today because we have the written word. We have what uh, Jesus said or what uh, the Holy Spirit chose to record as what he said and, and uh, we also what the, the letters of the apostles. So we have all that. And that's the only way that God is going to speak to us today. There are no latter-day saints. There are no uh, apostles, they're latter-day apostles. And there are no new revelations. This is it. And uh, the writer of Hebrews is trying to make that very clear and very plain to the Hebrew Christians that this is it. You can't go back. Anyway, he is appointed the heir of all things uh, through whom uh, through whom he also made the worlds and we uh, know from John 1 so forth that uh, he did uh, make the worlds. He was there in the beginning making the worlds. And might just add that like I think I said, he he didn't go down to Home, Home Depot and get a, a load of two befores to make the world. He made the world ex nihilo, which means out of nothing. Just spoke it into existence. <clears throat> and essentially, he said he's appointed the heir of all things. But Christ died for us. He died for us. Now, what typically... What does an heir have to wait on? <laughs> you, you got any heirs, uh, buddy? 
What are they waiting on? <laughs> For you to die. <laughs> they don't become an heir until they, you die. But that's not the case with Jesus. And Jesus was the one that died. And because of that, he was appointed, he has acceded to the heirship of all things. Who being the brightness of his glory, and I think King James says a fulgence, and I think the ASV says a fulgence too, which I kind of like that word, you know. But anyway, uh, he, he shone forth the uh, light of the glory of, of God. He, you know, when Philip uh, asked Jesus, you know, to show him the Father, he said, Look, you see me, don't you? You see me, you see the Father. <clears throat> now, we're not talking about physical appearance because God didn't have a physical appearance. <clears throat> but the very essence of God, that Jesus as God-man, had that very same essence, and so he had that very same brightness. <clears throat> and also, you know, the uh, Hebrew Hebrews uh, held God in high esteem and they wouldn't even pronounce his name <clears throat> so here you have uh, Jesus who is God they can see him they can talk to him they can see the essence of the Heavenly Father through the Son he says the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person uh, express image again is not the physical image <clears throat> it's the uh, spiritual image the essence this, you know, the essence of God Himself. <clears throat> uh, Jesus was was that. He had that express image. And upholding all things by the word of His power. So, that means the, the, the word is very powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. So He upheld all things. Now, what are all things? Well, let's kind of put it this way. If Jesus did not exist, then we wouldn't be here. And this world that we live in would not be here. And someday, just... If I could snap my fingers, somebody snap the fingers. <laughs> yeah, just like that, it's going to be gone. When, when they decide, when the... Uh, Heavenly Father and Jesus, and when they decide that time must come to an end, they will. <clears throat> but right now, they're upholding, he's upholding all things by the word of his power. <clears throat> when he had by himself purged our sins, and uh, it is through his own sacrifice. <clears throat> that our sins are um, done away with through His blood. Of course, we have to access that. It just doesn't happen because we acknowledge Jesus as Lord. There's more to it than just that. Um, <clears throat> and the interesting thing about this is that uh, he became qualified to purge their sins by the fact that he came down to earth. You know, God is a God of uh, justice. And when one transgresses against God, that is a violation of his justice, if you will. And justice must be paid for. It's not like some courts today or some judges today uh, no no sin will go unpunished except that someone who is an acceptable sacrifice you know in the Old Testament you know, had to always offer blood and this that and the other for sin but they didn't forgive sins they we always call it uh, kind of rolling forward <clears throat> and uh, you know, look at he, uh, uh, Romans 3:25. You see that they uh, 
were kind of held in advance until looking forward to the time that Jesus uh, was sacrificed on the cross. So without the blood of, of Jesus, an acceptable, if you want to call it Paschal lamb, one who had no sin, that was worthy enough to be offered up for the sins of man, until that was done, uh, man did not have ultimate and final forgiveness of sin. So it was Jesus. You know, God can't die. So God can't be sacrificed. But when Jesus came down as a man, He could die and be sacrificed. And He was perfect. Only a perfect uh, uh, sacrifice would do, and that was Jesus. So to satisfy God's justice, somebody had to come down as a man and live a perfect life and then be offered as a sacrifice for the sins of mankind. And only God could do that in the form of the man God, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I've always wondered, uh, <clears throat> and, and Ephesians says he didn't count it uh, as something to be grasped on to. He, he felt, you know, gave that up so he'd come down to earth. You, you just think about it, the uh, majesty of that. God giving up his place in heaven to come down to be a man, to live as a man, to be tempted as a man, yet sinless, and then to die with no fault on his own, no fault, to die in order that his blood uh, might be shed for the sins of others. I've always wondered, <clears throat> you know, if I were there in heaven and he said, I want you to go down and live life as a man, I would probably say, where's George? Let George do it. <laughs> but So how they decided that, I don't know, but uh, the fact of the matter is that you know Jesus did come down and uh, live that perfect life. And because of that, he sat down <clears throat> at the right hand of the majesty on high. And the majesty is referring to uh, God himself, God the Father. And any time you, you have someone sitting on the, the right hand of um, say a king, potentate, or what have you. That's a position of power. And it has the same effect as, uh, the same authority as the person, you know, that you're on the right hand of. <clears throat> so that's a very esteemed position. And it says, uh, as he has by inheritance, Obtained, obtained a more excellent name than they. Now, inheritance, he became a son. And uh, he's appointed heir of all things. Not because the father died, but because he died. So he had a more excellent name than, than uh, these individuals. Now, you might keep in mind that they're really... Uh, seven things that are uh, mentioned here. Well, there actually is more than seven, but uh, probably seven things that you need to keep in mind. It, uh, in the second and third verses, you know, what I did I, in my Bible, I just marked them. One, two, three. <clears throat> but anyway, the first thing in, the, in this first four verses, actually verses two and three, the first uh, four things that uh, called great statements, if you want to. First thing was uh, he was appointed heir of all things. And the, the uh, second great statement was that he made the world. And he's talking about Jesus, of course. <clears throat> And the third great statement was he was the brightness of, uh, of his glory, the glory of the Father. 
And the fourth statement was that he's the express image of his person, that is, of the Father. And the fifth statement, he upholds all things by the word of his power. And the sixth great statement, he had by himself purged our sins and sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Whether well, well, that's the, the seventh one, sat down the right hand, majesty on high. Now, there are other things that, that came by about as a result of this, having become, uh, because of these things, having become so much better than the angels. He has, by inheritance, attained a more excellent name than they. Uh, let me see here. <clears throat> I will tell you one thing about uh, well, most any study that you do that no matter what I may say here, if you do not engage in your own personal study <clears throat> very intently, you will not get a whole lot out of the, uh, you know, just a study like this. It's a good reminder to go over it. But you must study. You must study. Let me see. Let's kind of take uh, in, in these uh, verses in, in order. And, you know, God having of old times spoken in the, in the prophets. Now, <clears throat> either spoke to the prophets or, or special emissaries. And uh, they were, as they were directed by God or by the Holy Spirit, and, of course, when we went to the study of the uh, Minor Prophets, we, we saw that there were different ways in which God spoke uh, to the prophets, different ways that He uh, revealed His will to them to also, in turn, reveal it to the uh, uh, Jews at the time. <clears throat> One way that we don't often recognize as God speaking to us, you think of the uh, uh, Jews, uh, think of the nation of uh, Israel, the nation of uh, Judah. He spoke to them many times to the prophets, but eventually, since they didn't listen, he spoke them to them through the means of punishment. So make no mistake about it, punishment does send a message. Now, personally, I'd rather have some written word about it <laughs> rather than the punishment, but punishment does happen. And, of course, uh, God's uh, uh, had a progressive uh, revelation. He's eventually working towards the uh, uh, time of the New Testament, the time that the plan of salvation is uh, revealed, but uh, up to that time is only... Uh, fragmentary and, and uh, it was incomplete as we read uh, before in Isaiah here a little there a little <clears throat> now the prophets and of course the law of Moses were schoolmasters Galatians says uh, that brought them to Christ but when we get over to Hebrews the, the time of uh, school days were over the time of the imperfections of the Old Testament were done with. And that great and final instructor, Jesus, he'd given them the 
inspired apostles and the Holy Spirit who, of course, revealed the Word. And they brought the final and complete uh, testimony of the plan of salvation that was revealed in the New Testament. He says in these, uh, the end of these days, he's uh, spoken to us through his uh, prophets, or spoken to us as in his son. Now, the end of these days, and of course, the New King James says the last days. What, what are the last days? Well, they're speaking right now. And he's speaking right now, and in the time this was written, it was probably the middle 60s of the first century. So he's speaking to them now. So those are the last days, the days in which they were speaking. So it's going to be the end of the Jewish age. And, and keep in mind that even though the uh, church had been established and the gospel had been preached and so forth, Nothing really changed in in uh, Judah, in Jerusalem. You know, temple worship still went on, still had the priest and, and uh, what have you. But that was going to change very soon. And uh, we we'll eventually get over to Matthew 24 where it talks about that. So these things were going to uh, pass away. In fact, they had to pass away because uh, the conventional Judaism, if you want to call it that, was in competition with the church. And so when Jew Jerusalem was destroyed and the uh, temple system was uh, done away with, uh, conventional mosaical practices could not be uh, continued. They were gone. The competition with Christianity had ended. <clears throat> but the Hebrews, well, they couldn't see that. And, I, and really, I can't uh, blame them all that much if I'd been raised a Jew for the entire life practicing the uh, law of Moses. And uh, converted to Christianity, but I didn't see anything that changed. Things just continued as it always was. But if they understood Christianity like they should have, they would see that, you know, conventional or typical Judaism, the Law of Moses, could not continue. But it was continuing, so, you know, they were a little concerned about that. <clears throat> we'll get over to the 24th uh, chapter of Matthew if you want to uh, look, look over there 24th chapter verse 15 <clears throat> it says there therefore when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Now, if you look at the commentaries, they, they, they would use this section to reference the second coming of Christ, to establish his earthly kingdom. That's not what it's talking about. <clears throat> there may be a, a second coming, but it's going to be the army of Rome, where a, Jesus exacts his punishment on the uh, uh, Jerusalem once again, completely destroys it. So, that's going to happen in AD 70. And it's, like I say, this is probably written about, this is, say, around, I would say, 65 AD, AD 65. So, in five short years, it's going to be gone. And I think, in part, because of the uh, uh, what was said in Matthew 24 when the Roman army did come the Christians for the most part left the city 
and the only ones left were the uh, the uh, mosaical law practicing Jews. <clears throat> The Hebrews were closed to the, the inevitable truth of the uh, new gospel system that the uh, mosaical world is going gonna, is gonna to come to an end. And, uh, you know, to read through that uh, chapter 24, and you'll see that in the light of the fact that this is it's predicting the uh, destruction of, of Jerusalem, and it said there they could, uh, you know, see the Son of Man coming on, on the clouds of heaven, pyre and, and great glory. Well, he did, but not the second coming. It was on the uh, the banner of the Roman legions to render vengeance to to the Lord, I mean, to the uh, on the Jews. Uh, well, it says that the uh, sun is better than the angels, and we'll, we'll get into that next week. How is it that the sun is better than the angels? And of course, it is said that the angels were instrumental in in uh, the uh, Old Testament, you know, uh, revealing the Old Testament. So we'll we'll see how is it that Jesus is better than angels or the sun. So, till next week.